Hey everybody, welcome back to the Popcorners Fan Club Podcast. I am your host, uh... <laughs> A white queso? Is that what the white one's called? White queso? <laughs> Joined as always by Spicy Queso. Is that me? Since I'm I mean, Maybe it's yeah. white, white cheddar and spicy queso. I think there's, there's sea salt. Uh, Everidge, which popcorn are you eating right now? Uh, I'm eating sea salt. Okay, that, I've, I have sampled every popcorner. That is the worst one, by far. <laughs> well, fuck. By far, it is, they, it's the most flavorless chip experience I've ever had. <laughs> there might be one grain of sea salt per um, flavorless little popcorner chip that they don't put anything else wow. on. Uh, horrendous. Um, uh, Florian, which popcorner flavor would you be? Is there a German one? I don't know. <laughs> Evidently, according to Tuco, there are seven, but I, I've only experienced, I think, five. I was gonna say, I, I can only flavor. say I've seen three or four. Wait, the cinnamon you said, Hartsey? Uh, no, I said schnitzel since that's a German oh, food. Oh, schnitzel flavor. Well, there is a, like a cinnamon that, one. That would be perfect. So oh, I guess it's like well, churro I guess... flavor, which, so Hartsey, that would be you. Oh, well, <laughs> well, I thought he was the spicy one. <laughs> oh, no. Mm, he can be both. Uh, so, yeah, I guess, Erich, we should do a snack test. I've got my spicy queso yep. right here. Uh, I'm gonna pull out a popcorner. So let us know what, what do you like think of shit. your your sea salt tastes like shit. <laughs> Awful. Well, there you go, Erich. Once you told me that advertisement doesn't work for you, but <laughs> here you are, having bought a, a product based on its advertisement alone. So how does it feel to be proven it, wrong? But I want a meme. I could not make those purchases. No, Erich, I think you <laughs> fucked up. You should have bought the one from the commercial because I've, of all the ones I've tried, the white cheddar, if that's what it's called, like the Walter White, mm -hmm. and it's in the blue meth bag. <laughs> it is. It's by far the best one. Like, there's a reason why they chose that for the commercial. Um, I'd say this nacho cheese one I just had, or whatever, spicy queso. Not that good. You're better off eating a nacho cheese Dorito. I don't know about the... Uh, are we supposed to talk about Breaking Bad or something? <laughs> well, I saw it in the good timeline where Walt makes popcorners instead of meth. Yes, so this is the <laughs> podcast where we review just, like, the, the life and times of Walter White, regardless of how corrupt or criminal his behavior yeah. might be. I can't believe I forgot about Snap, uh, uh, uh what they call it. Popcorners? Popcorn? Yeah, popcorners. Yeah, yeah, pop corners. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I, I forgot about them, and I went out to the groceries yesterday. Can't believe I forgot. Well, in this section of episodes, we do see the cornered episode, which I assume has, it had to be some inspiration for Popcorners, right? I mean, Breaking Bad has <laughs> an episode called Cornered. I mean, they definitely wouldn't have partnered with Breaking Bad if not for that exact episode title. Yeah, so. yeah. what if when Skylar White goes to the Four Corners, which is a real place in the United States for some reason, and she flips her coin to, you know, see her destiny, what if instead of flipping a coin, she's flipping a delicious popcorner? That is one of the most, like, shitty tourist destination ideas ever in the entire United States. Well, let's ask Florian. He's not from here. What do you think this is, Florian? <laughs> Well, I, I mean, I'm pretty sure it's like the, the border between four states, but I'm surprised if there's only one of those. There so is. More... E. Rich, okay, yeah. the bit is over. Please stop crunching those disgusting <laughs> chips in the mic. <laughs> you can't stop. <laughs> the advertisement's got him. I had one Once and you I pop, was done. You can't stop. No, I popped and I stopped immediately. <laughs> I said no more for today. <laughs> it, well, you're still going. <laughs> well. <fuck. laughs> uh, boys. I, uh, if anybody is still listening, which I doubt anybody is, let's actually talk about the first half of season four of Breaking Bad. And tell me if this is a hot take, but I am willing to say this section out of all the sections we've reviewed so far is without a doubt the worst one. Really? What? I was really into these episodes. Wow. wow. Must be a hot, hot take. And I I'm notoriously a fan of season four, E. Rich. Okay, don't get me wrong. <laughs> Are, like, the first it, half, is the back half the... so strong, or yes, is that it is the idea. A... Okay. I, I think it's like a Survivor season with a really shitty pre-merge, but that post-merge is like the toppest tier, best section of any season you'll ever see. 
Yeah, you wow. just really love that zombie gas coming up, you know? Uh, that's the worst part of the... <laughs> <laughs> but I think I think we're gonna pill Monkey out of liking season four. I think by the end of this... It, we very well could. These two episodes be like, season four, very bottom. <laughs> so, have we talked about how much you hate that Gus thing in this show yet? Oh, surely have we, we have. about that in that chat? I, I think in, mentioned it. maybe in uh, the Better Call Saul podcast, we talked about it. Yeah. Well, I'm, I guess we'll wait for for it to actually come up. But before you three it. tell me why I'm wrong, I want to talk about the writing style for this season, if you guys mm. know any behind the scenes on it. I certainly don't. So basically, don't. they they changed it up. Like Season two, they did the, the cringy thing, I guess, where they, they planned out like the ending very early on, so that's why we're getting all these uh, cold opens with like the plane wreckage. And the problem with that was, even though they planned it ahead, uh, it, stu- it sucked. Like, the plane crash, I still don't like it. Whatever. Season 4, and I might be making all this up, but I remember hearing Vince talk about this shit. Season 4, they were writing the scripts and then filming them immediately. Like, they, they had no idea where they were going. Wow. It was being filmed and written simultaneously. And Holy shit. So it, it's kind of like the what, the gardening approach to writing, like uh, George R.R. R. Mm, Martin yeah. does, where you don't really know where you're going, but you... Uh, do a bunch of interesting stuff and then play with what you've created um yeah and i think that's why this season they they don't know where they're going they waste an entire episode with marie fucking going to open houses and stealing spoons like they literally are wasting <laughs> our time there's a, a there's a five the minute scene episode in the entire series yeah, you know, I'm, I'm the worst episodes of the whole show are in this section there's a five minute scene where skylar and and walt are playing blackjack so that they can like prove that he really <laughs> knows how to do it and then they end the scene saying wait no you're in recovery this is a waste of time and i'm like yeah no shit like is that how the writers room was they realized the scene they wrote to waste of time and they just left it in why is this wasting my fucking time wow i, I can't believe that you would say i forgot that scene was even in there that's how like i was like what am i watching is this like a deleted scene that was thrown on netflix what is going on I mean, I think it, it really shows us a lot about these characters, how, how Walt thinks he's so smart, but he, he, he apparently really can't play blackjack. And then instead of, like, learning it, he just says, nah, let, let's just not do it. Like, I think it, it I was think a waste of time. No, 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 no. This is an important character moment because it shows me that these two are interested in running a criminal enterprise, especially Skylar wants to get the story straight, wants to figure out exactly what they're going to say when they have to say it and know exactly what their story is. And like they 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 aren't pros at this. They, they, they don't really know what they're doing. So like the I, I think like like a party trick almost uh, Walt would like to know how to play blackjack or Skylar wants him to know. But like. Yeah, like but it logically, doesn't actually he should matter. not be playing cards or gambling at all if they're sticking to their story. No, for sure. But like, if, if Hank would ask, like, what was your what was your thing? What was your like at blackjack? W- what did you do? Like, he would have nothing to say. Well, didn't Walt already read a book on it? Like, by the point they're doing the stupid card game on the table. Well, no, sure. The but if it's clear right, that like he's taking forever to do it, and because he knows, yeah, he's, I, it's I a waste know. of time. His wife is being an overly meticulous bitch about this shit, and she even says, "I'm not as good at lying as you." Like for Walt, this is I, literally a waste of his time because he can just lie off the top of his head and trick most people. And she's like, "I love." Th- no, I, I hate this. This scene is when people say they hate Skylar. I assume it's because mm-hmm. of this scene. This is the most <laughs> Peggy Hill energy I've ever seen in my entire <laughs> life. When she writes. It's a nine-page script of what they're going <laughs> yeah. to say to Hank and Marie. It is so cringy and horrible that I, I, I think for the first time I was on Walt's side in this fucking <laughs> relationship. <laughs> <laughs> I love the Skyler yeah. stuff in this in this side of the season. I love I, Peggy I think Hill, but I don't like it coming out of Skyler. <laughs> I think it's great how much she's like thought of everything and like wants to like when he tries to go and buy uh, like champagne, she's like. You don't have money. Why would you buy this champagne? Like, <laughs> it doesn't make sense. It, it is not like anybody's going to be looking at their shit that closely that he couldn't just buy champagne. Right. But I, it's funny that she's that obsessed with it. I'm actually like complete opposite of Mumkey in this situation. It's one of the few times I actually like Skylar. Holy because shit. Because I think it's... 
I think it's. I just think it's really cool to see her like really trying to get uh, the story straight and really like her dedicating herself to being part of this now because now she is part of uh, Walt's operation. It really reminds me of a character from Ozark if you've seen that show. Uh, the main character's wife, Marty. But like they're both like in the um, in it together, and it's really good. Well, so Heart Heartsy, I'll give you this: when she does the scheme with uh, Bo, uh, well, no, what's his name? <laughs> Oh, Billy Red, Bill Red Burr. Bill Burr, not Bo Burr. Bill Burr. <laughs> Bill yeah. Burr. Like when she does the scheme with him to basically finagle the car wash out of uh, Mr. Eyebrows. That's a lot of fun. I like that, Skyler. Yeah. I like when Skyler yeah. is lying to the the locksmith about you know losing her purse and getting mugged and shit so that she can break into Walter's <laughs> apartment. But when she's scripting out word for word what another person needs to say in a lie, at that point you need to fucking uh, cool your horses a little bit. Come on, it's it's endearing that she's bad at this, but I actually did hate <laughs> the, the car wash scene, okay? I, I did hate the... You hate it? The, the, well, n- no, okay, I, I, I hate I hate Skylar for, for scamming Bogdan out of his car wash. Now fuck Bogdan and his eyebrows. Look, look, he may be responsible for Walt getting cancer, but Walt should know better. He, he's a chemistry teacher, and... And fucking Skyler has almost no right, okay? He, he's, wait, wait. How he, is he, he responsible for him getting cancer? Well, I assume it's the chemicals in the car wash and he's not supposed to uh, wash them? Probably not. No, I, I no. would not bet on that. Florian, it is canon that when Skyler was pregnant with Walt Jr., she was smoking a pack of cigs a day to, to give him cerebral palsy, and then she was blowing the smoke down <laughs> Walter's throat to give him lung cancer. Yeah. Skyler admitted to doing wow. that last episode. Like, I, I'm just, I just say, I just want to say that, yeah, like back in the day, I, I guess I didn't like Bogdan as, mu- as much, but I think he's he's just doing his best. And, and I mean, you gotta make hard choices when you're running a business and I think he didn't deserve it, okay? She, she really severely scammed him out of a lot of money, all right? <laughs> I mean, he can retire with uh, nearly a million in the bank. I'm sure he's fine. Oh, I mean, I mean, he should know the environmental regulations well enough to, like, know when he's being uh, scammed by them. So it's uh, his fault. Oh, that's that's stupid. Like, <laughs> you, you can't imagine. Why didn't he just get his own lawyer then, Florian? <laughs> he he should have well, called mean, Saul. I mean, he. OK, so so Bogdan just decided that he would roll this this loss onto onto Skyland. I guess I guess he deserves it a little bit then. But I, I think like, you, you should never say someone should have known better than to get scammed because, like, obviously you're gonna have a bad day sometimes and then you get scammed, okay? It happens. Like, please, don't. Wait, what? Because you're having a bad day, your basic rationale and reason Yes, is that is how it works. Florian, yeah, how many scams have you fallen for? <laughs> no, I don't think I have. But... A sugar baby scam? Florian, have you ever heard of the Golden Gate Bridge? <laughs> no. <laughs> is it really made of gold? Oh, no, really? <laughs> wow. Right, I, uh, I would I'd like probably... to sell you that bridge for the low, low price of oh, every dollar in your bank account. I mean, I, I probably got fished once from out of my Steam account, but I got it mm. back, so I don't... I, I mean, I, I think it's it's easy to just make a mistake. It's just like, scams are everywhere now, so we, we, we are a little more aware, but it's... Like, when, when someone comes up to you and he knows, like, this the, the specific... The specific regulation that you're violating, come on, man! You're not gonna think, oh, oh, this is clearly a scammer. Really? Like he knows things. Yeah, exactly. Nobody can possibly how, be how competent. Much, how much of a pause was there between Bill Burr saying the regulation and Skyler finding it, telling him, and then him <laughs> reading it back to Bogdan? Like they did it instantly. It was like magic. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like. It, it's it's a real regulation, so if he he just can't explain why there is this this weird soap in the ground, they probably put soap there just to to throw him off, you know. Okay, we are spending too much time on <laughs> Skyler content. Uh, does uh-huh. anybody have anything they really want to talk about from this section? Why am I wrong, and why is this actually one of the the upper sections that we've watched? I so think far? I think Jesse's Jesse's complete like uh, dismay and like doom spiral that he's in is great to watch there's some great camera work especially uh during all of his like doom doom bits yeah and the literal me energy is like through the roof 
<laughs> no, I think the Jesse plot is almost as bad as the airplanes crashing. Like this is the True. the concept of him turning his house into a meth party den is uh -huh. it feels like it should be a Todd plot from Bojack Horseman <laughs> where he wants to like throw a never ending party at Bojack's house and doesn't realize they're all on meth the whole time and he's just sober. <laughs> like that's that's what this should be. This was <laughs> am I wrong in saying this was cartoonishly done? Having the fucking meth den. Yeah, I well, think it's a little bit much, but I think it serves a purpose. I don't think you could keep it going as long as he does, but like I also think that like that happens all the time and I, I don't they're actually, stealing don't all of this shit but they in... don't take the speakers or the stereo <laughs> <laughs> well they are quite happy it takes them four days to go upstairs and steal this bag of money that he has sitting on the floor like in the drawer you think that bedroom. if everything was that open that people would have stolen everything immediately but uh, yeah you know yeah they would <laughs> they wouldn't be fucking dancing and partying they're really? all junkies so yeah. they don't fucking think about anything <laughs> Yeah, so they should be going, like, just destroying everything to get enough money for the next hit, I guess. But I guess he's giving out free meth to them. He's giving it for free. That's why they yeah. stay. Yeah, I can't believe that you would accuse these these drug these these poor addicted people of, of trying to 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 steal from me even faster than they did. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I, I really hated all of that stuff. I wish it was not there. And I, I hate all of... Really? Let's be honest. The first three episodes of this season are just wallowing in misery. Like, And I think Better Call Saul had kind of the same season trajectory where season three has a lot of explosive, big, exciting stuff happen. Really big cliffhanger. Exciting. Season four, we have to deal with the repercussions, and it's going to be very slow and very painful, not just for the characters, but for the audience. We're going to see Hank at home. Marie has to help him shit, yeah, yeah. and he's going to be really mean to her yeah. about Cheetos, and we're going to do that for three episodes. We're going to have Jesse crying while in his go-kart and standing in his <laughs> meth mosh pit for three fucking episodes. We're going to hear eight full shitty rap songs play on Jesse's sound speakers for three fucking episodes. Am I wrong? Yes, you uh, are, because that's what television is for. If you want what <laughs> you want, you want a movie. You want a movie to, like, no, very quickly deal with I don't think that's what I'm shit. saying. I want, I want a TV show to wallow in this stuff because these are huge, like, monumental events I, that happen. And I can like, say um, one thing that will completely rebut your point of these episodes being mid. In episode four of season four, Jesse is seen playing Sonic All-Star Racing, and that is the best moment in TV history. True. Wow. <laughs> and he does subvert my expectations when he takes the hand of the short skirt, super skinny chick who is, let's be honest, mm, yeah. a, a bit of a butterface, let's be clear here. But Oh, damn! He takes her up to the bed, wow. and uh, they start playing Sonic instead of playing screwing, games, yeah. and I was, uh -huh. I was shocked. That would be me in that situation. Oh, Taking her what, out to play what, Sonic. <laughs> yes. What a great fucking uh, uh, fake out is that you really think he's going to take her up to fuck, but it's just a fucking That's right. Sonic. And he just found out that all of his money was stolen. So it's like, oh, man, what's he going to do to this woman? Oh, he's going to yeah. play some Sonic with her. <laughs> um, also, Jesse has a uh, copy of Rage before the game came out <laughs> and also somehow a light gun yep. burst. <laughs> Wait, so yeah, he's, is that a, a Nintendo accessory? Yeah, I think it's some kind of... <laughs> is no, Rage a Nintendo game? Magic. No, no Sonic it's not. Sonic All-Star Racing okay. also wasn't out when this episode took place. So, that's... <laughs> so if you got mad that uh, Howard Hamlin had a coffee maker that was six years uh, retro or whatever... Nobody should get mad about that. Yeah. It's, it's Don't stupid. get mad, because even you... Breaking Bad, they couldn't get a fucking video game within one year. Well, no, they specifically picked... Wait, did they? Well, Rage wasn't even out when Breaking Bad came out, so they no, specifically it was not. From the future. Yeah, I think Breaking Bad takes place in 2008, and what, this game came out the next year, pretty much? Yeah, I think 2010. Yeah. It was a, like an ad for the game, I guess. Yeah, so I guess Vince yeah. uh, was not thinking too clearly on that one. <laughs> well, I mean, he probably took the money. He's trying to figure I out how he can put a toilet into the plot. Look, I just <laughs> want to say that I, I really <laughs> enjoyed the, the party stuff back in the day. I, I like that the chess is just like, money, 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 money. I'm rolling in the money, 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 money. I get that fast money and the fly cars. I get that. 
<laughs> I got to tell you, back in the day, that song was such a meme for me and my friends that, uh, and oh, by the way, this is way back in the day, so we had to make mixtape CDs for our cars. And, we <laughs> and I made my buddy yeah. uh, a CD that was just the money song from Breaking Bad 14 times in a row, and we would listen Hell to it yeah. driving around. But Florian, go ahead. I had to tell that important anecdote. <laughs> yeah, I, I thought it was funny that I thought he was getting he's being social and he's hanging out. But seeing it now, I guess it's pretty, pretty bad. It's All horrific. Just, yeah, they'd be they'd Wait, be what? unable to be to be drugged and stuff. You know? Wait, you thought he was being social? He literally just like <laughs> sets them up to party and then leave like just he has to go oh, to man, work. I mean, it's not nice. Oh, he no. makes a party for his friends. That's right. <laughs> I mean, like, ex except for the fact that they're all, they're all gonna get high, I guess. That's Florian would be Todd in my BoJack Horseman episode. Like, what? It's not Zeva partying. Yeah, Ziva just I hanging so. out. These are bad vibes. <laughs> what is going on? Yeah, I mean, you just have a guy who just rambling about 9/11 and and, and X-rays. You know, it's just. Oh my just God, that party. fucking guy! I would punch that guy. Why? No, he oh, he doesn't he buy the, the pizza? Up, dude. Yeah, he buys the pizza. Come also, on. speaking of this season, that they they're so desperate for content because they don't know where they're going with the season until you know halfway through that they have to waste our time. Uh, they're like, okay, we fucked up season three. We threw the pizza on the roof. It wasn't cut. <laughs> that doesn't make any goddamn sense. Let's have a four gotta, and a half yeah. minute scene explaining why the pizza <laughs> wasn't cut. Amazing, Fuck amazing off. concept. They so pass good. the savings on to you. Oh my god! It's like it's not even like good. Like I don't even think it's funny. It it just feels no, like funny. they're filling it in a pothole. I it's really know, funny. I didn't realize it wasn't cut. You sometimes get a pizza that isn't cut. Never in my Wait, whole what? life. When? What do you mean you get a pizza that isn't cut? For him. I mean, sometimes they when you buy a frozen way. pizza, they don't pre-cut it. You're correct, but when you order <laughs> delivery hot and fresh fucking pizza, they cut that shit. No, I swear I got uncut pizza at some point. I got uncut gems on my shelf. Let's watch yeah. it right now. Orion, <laughs> I I need you to order a bunch of pizzas from pizza places around <laughs> you and like do a comparison. Schnitzel you have to pizza. Well, I want extra uncut pizza. Look, I'm I'm. I'm trying to eat more healthy and trying to eat less meat, okay? You can get a healthy pizza. This. A healthy pizza? What are you crazy? Yeah. yeah. Pizza. Pizza. Yeah, okay. <laughs> you need to post proof or retract, Florian. Just the other day, I, 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 I heard from an Italian that they have such a thing as healthy pizza. Shut up, you don't. <laughs> uh, my man, Mrs. Obama, told me pizza is a vegetable. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess that makes sense. Anti-Italian discrimination <laughs> right there. Uh, I'm looking at my notes here and some interesting things. When Skylar's going through her script that she wrote for The Lie, uh, Walter criticizes her by saying, uh, two terribly's. And he has the same inflection as when he says, uh, two copies of Mr. Megorium's Wonder Emporium. <laughs> so, I don't know if that was intentional or not, but Walt's always, you know, he's, there's double the thing that Walt might want, and he always has to point it out. Mm -hmm. um, and then, oh. when, when he's at dinner, he ends up using the terribly, terribly line that he was complaining about. Which because is, at that point, at, at, something came out, like, right before, and, like, at that point, I think he is genuinely feeling guilty. Mm-hmm. I like how he sincerely apologizes to her, and he he just says, "Oh no, it was just part of the script." Like, no. Yeah. Th oh, that was pretty brutal. Yeah. And like you can oh, see on her face, like, "Oh my god, he's actually doing it," and then he just goes straight back to, "I was acting, bitch." Uh, speaking of Walt, <laughs> we actually see his most deplorable action in the show within these batches of episodes. You know what it is? Wait, what? Why? Declining wow. Jesse's offer to go go karting. That's right. That's right. <laughs> that, was, that was pretty vile. <laughs> it's pretty bad. Killing Jane, I understand, but go karts are fun. <laughs> yeah. Well, Rewatching this part, it's like there there isn't that much stuff that Gus did wrong. I, it's really quite annoying. But I mean, in the last season, there was plenty that he did wrong. I guess. Well, okay, think about okay. it from somebody who watched Better Call Saul first. And like from that perspective, Walt is the bad guy in the the Walt versus Gus conflict, right? They're probably rooting for Gus. I mean, Walt is pretty much the bad guy all the time. You just don't realize it. Like, like none of the actions were necessary, and and they were all really bad. 
Hey, Rich, you mean you killing Jane wasn't necessary? Wow. Well, killing um, Jane might have been fine, but this section did. has has some great stuff with Jesse and uh, what, what's the old guy? Why can't I fucking remember his name? Mike. Mike. That's it. Uh, I I really love. They're trying to essentially drive a wedge between Jesse and Walt. That uh, I think that Gus sees that like they together are willing to do crazy, crazy things for each other. So he needs to drive drive something between them, and I think that's that's really cool part of these these episodes. Uh, you bring that up, and I agree. I like the how Mike is more of a genuine father figure to Jesse than mm-hmm. Walt, and like he's giving some pretty genuine advice at times. But I think another reason why I have issue with this as opposed to other seasons is because I think in terms of rewatchability, some of the tension in in this early part of season four does not work as well. Yeah, um, and I, you know what's going to happen. Well, you might think that, but think back to like the episode in season two when they're kidnapped by Tuco and they're, you know, and Hector's there. And it's very tense even after watching it 10 times. Whereas this, when when I know that the box cutter is going to cut his own man, the box cutter scene does nothing for me. Like, there's no tension. It's actually kind of boring and long. Like, some of these scenes wow. only work on the, the first viewing, I think. And when we have um, Mike and Jesse together, and we don't know why, and we think, oh, he's going to kill Jesse. Like, that was the big cliffhanger from the previous episode. He, Mike has kidnapped Jesse. Oh, what's going to happen? And, and my, uh, Jesse's doing the Wolverine thing. He's putting his keys through his fingers. He's ready to fight. And Mike's got the shovel. Ooh. Like, oh, my God, he's going to dig him a shallow grave. Uh, no, no. Uh, on second viewing, I guess this is all a big, boring waste of time, huh? Well, I like that we see Gale using the box cutter, okay? Like, if you rewatch it, then you'll, you'll definitely pay attention to that box cutter, okay? <laughs> I just think they spent more time crafting the previous seasons and they put more thought into it to create genuine tension that will transcend multiple viewings. Whereas this, they were uh, just kind of flying by the seat of their pants intentionally. And the the tension is not built up in a way that I can appreciate it multiple times. I think this first part of the season has to feel looser because like there is no antagonizing force. Like they are working for Gus. They know that that's a problem, but like they have no means of getting out from under it. So you have to focus on other things for them to like be preoccupied on. But and, a lot of the like, focuses are again like a waste of time, like genuinely a waste of time. There's at one point Walt is in Saul Goodman's office and he recaps the previous three episodes to Saul for five full minutes. He's just recapping what we just saw. Wait, what, what part is that? He's, he's, he's pacing around Saul's office like, Oh, you're not going to believe that my wife is doing this and this. And then in episode one, I was doing this and this. And then in episode two, Jesse's doing... Like, he's literally listing off the plot points from the previous three episodes. Like, they... Wow. I don't think they knew... They Well, they, they clearly didn't because they admitted it. They had no clue <laughs> where they were going. And I think we'll see in the second half that they, they finally solidified and made some real Kino. I, mean, I don't know. Don't they don't they introduce the ricey things. stuff in this in this part? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and they also they inter, they also introduce the vacuum repair man, but like it yeah. it's all just thrown in. Like it doesn't nothing really leads to another thing. It's just the characters are floating around from place to place. If you're going to compare this section to the other sections in terms of plot progression, this by far had the least amount of things happening. I mean, I, I like the Walter recap. It's good to know how he didn't even remember it things. happened. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did see the, the the first three episodes a week before before you told us that we're gonna delay. Oh, good. <laughs> I don't know. I think like Hank Hank putting stuff together. Uh, That's the, the great part. Episode. That's great. I love that. The stuff. fucking problem dog episode is fucking great with the, with the therapy session. Like a lot of things eventually happen and come of this stuff. But you do need a couple episodes where, like, they're kind of marching in place. But it's it's characters, like, relieving tension or... Yeah, like, you can't always be at 10. 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. Like, that, that's not how tension works. Yeah, but in terms of a satisfying we individual four, episode, really these episodes do not do it for me. If you're going to list, in, in order from best episode to worst of all Breaking Bad episodes, I think a lot of these are going to be in, like, the bottom 25%. Hmm. Well, to me, the the main con- the main issue with these episodes is that everyone puts up with Jesse when Jesse has <laughs> almost nothing to offer. 
Like, I feel like Chessy should be in mortal danger a lot more, but but everyone's like, yeah, we can't kill him. He's he's a piece of shit, but we can't kill him. And <laughs> he just pisses around and nobody can stop him. And I, I feel like that there should have been like a, a genuine danger for him and that would have been good. What do you think? Hard C, that's on you. Oh, uh, <laughs> you're, you're asking me. Um, well, I um, like Jesse. He's a cool character. What? <laughs> yeah, I also like Jesse quite a lot, so I don't mind if like he's he's not quote unquote uh, valuable or <laughs> worthwhile to keep around because he's a fun presence to have no, in the my, show. My favorite <laughs> aspect about these episodes are the dynamic between uh, Jesse and uh, Finger, and their dynamic <laughs> and relationship growing over the course of these episodes. Finger was always in, like one of my favorite characters, but after Barracon Saul, he's definitely in like my top five at least. Top what? Who? Three, maybe. Mike. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> kid named Finger. <laughs> oh, <God>. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even realize that was happening. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, it was n nobody else seething with rage that Jesse left his money in a meth den. Un. He doesn't care. He doesn't care. He's making yeah. like. Okay, look, look. Very simply, Walt is making shitloads of money, so much that fucking uh, Skyler is like, this is way too much money. We cannot just buy one business and launder it through that. It's just way too fucking much. If Walt has that much money, then Jesse must have like that much, basically. Yeah, so he's probably got so much money and so much money coming in all the time that it doesn't matter if someone steals it. Yeah, not to him. mention that the damage to his uh, to his really nice house <laughs> that he scammed from his parents in, in this in this mess escapade is, is probably way worse than the money and he's gonna lose. Well, maybe seen. maybe it's just a little hard for an, an optimistic, happy-go-lucky guy like me to empathize with a completely apathetic <laughs> character who doesn't care about what happens to him. Uh huh. Well, yeah. well I mean, he, he, like, <laughs> wait, what? He's he's, uh, he's at a low point in his life, and he probably thinks he's worthless and everything around I him. I can't even imagine what that's like. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, I thought you're you just living on a rainbow. rainbow all the time. Hey, how about this? Uh, quiz time. I was watching this with the the subtitles on again. Closed captioning, boys. Uh, Walt Jr. <laughs> says when he finds out about Walt being a gambler, he says that Walt made buku bucks. Who wants to spell <laughs> Buku Bucks? Uh, I, I was do. shocked. B I do. I do. That's B E A B E A C O U P. Nope. I'll try what? to uh <laughs> Buku. B O U K Buku uh O O. No. I think it has two C's. B E A U C O U P. Ah! <laughs> fuck, I knew Buku I was bucks. something. What the fuck language is that, e Rich? Uh, that French. can't be sounds English. Like, yeah. It sounds like French to me. Uh, and uh, Walt <laughs> Jr. also says that they should roll Hank through the car wash. That's the line of the, <laughs> line of the season for me. Does, does it seem like Walt Jr. disappears for like five or six episodes at a time? He's introduced and, like, in what? episode two with breakfast uh, cereal. So yeah. and, he, he's got his priorities. Yeah, so, and then he just reappears, and I'm like, oh yeah, Walt is in this show, isn't he? It just seems like he's only there for like two or three episodes, and then he fucks off completely, and we just never see him. Uh, well, when I'm Jesse goes, that... uh, sorry, Florian, go ahead. I'm glad that he's not called Finn anymore. That would be stupid, wouldn't it? Uh, he's not. He's never called Finn. Oh, Flint, right? <laughs> Flint? Flint? No, he's he's not called Flint either. He, well, he's he's not time. the cleanest water system in Michigan, <laughs> Florian. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, I can't name remember. Is Flynn. <laughs> you were Wait, so close. I... Oh, Finn, Flynn. First you said Finn, <laughs> then Flynn. <laughs> so close. Okay, so Mike yeah. kidnaps Jesse, and Walt thinks uh -huh. that Jesse's been killed and that he's going to be next. He leaves a voicemail for Skyler saying, Oh, I was thinking yeah. about you and the kids, I love you. Skyler hears this. Immediately, Immediately, pussy becomes a fucking waterfall. They're yeah. they're fucking, and now that uh, Hartsey is eighteen, I could say it. They're fucking. Walt and Skyler, they're raw dog, and they're fucking each other. Hartsey, can you believe it? Yeah, no, yeah, I can't believe now it. Now that you're eighteen, tell, give us your sex review of of Skyler yeah. and Walt. 
<laughs> Actually, anytime there's a sex scene in any piece of media I'm watching, I just look away from the screen because it you makes You said when eye. your parents are in the room, you get up and leave. <laughs> yes. <laughs> look, look, Walt just, just comes in and he's like, oh, oh, you, you guys were fucking, that's disgusting. Jeez, in your, own, in your own home, how could you? Don't you know that I might come in? Well, here's that was a fucking Twitter controversy recently. Is <laughs> is young adults being like, my parents are fucking in the other room. This sucks. Uh, <laughs> huh. Yeah, They're saying um, that that parents should not have sex while their their kids are in the. In I the mean, home. at least keep it down. Like, I don't think I yeah. ever heard my parents doing it, so I assume they just had the I decency think, to not do it when I'm at the fucking wall. Yeah, I think keeping I it down it, should be the rule. But I mean, it's just a pretty funny scene. It's not like very. It's they're not. They don't linger on it. It's just like a slight look of disgust as he looks away. I think that's pretty funny. Oh, for Walt <laughs> Jr. Yeah, but Walt anyway, Jr. um, they Walt they, Jr. wrote that post. <laughs> yeah, could have. He might be on Twitter still. <laughs> They they make the sweet sweet love and evidently Walt's dick was so good that Skyler decides he needs to move back in like immediately after they fuck she says you should move back in What is happening to Skyler are the men in the writers room just not understanding the female mind e rich Uh good dick does quite a lot uh for a woman so uh She's dick she was just missing it uh, yeah, the be the Beneke dick, I guess, is not enough. What the fuck happened with <laughs> Ted? It, it they, they like completely dropped that, and I know it comes back eventually, but I don't remember how. Yeah, he's busy scamming the IRS, <laughs> you know. Yeah, I think the yeah he since she it. is his bookkeeper, she will be in trouble when he gets audited, uh, okay. and then they'll look right, into right. Walt's money and blah blah blah. But anyway, right, right, okay. Did, did she we'll actually get to that. quit? Did she quit the job, or or why is she not well, there anymore? I would assume she did if she's doing the car wash full time now, but I think she gets dragged back into the Ted thing because her name's on the books. Yeah, yeah, it kind of annoys me how they they don't really address that a whole lot. But well, did she did she actually leave like at the end of the last season when she when she realized he was scamming everyone? I don't think so. I don't recall. <laughs> but wouldn't Erich think about this instead of? 80 scenes of Marie lying about who she is uh -huh. at these open houses and a five minute scene of Blackjack. What if we did get scenes of like uh, Skyler breaks up with Ted to go be with Walt again? Would that not be a better yeah. scene for the opening <laughs> episode? Yeah, I, 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 would, I would probably, I would probably uh, like that more. I do like the scenes of uh, Marie uh, stealing shit in houses. So I, I hate love the scene them. where the woman. I love the scene where the woman catches her and she. I like, hate it. Up the front. It's so fucking funny to me. It, it's fucking hilarious. It's so fucking and, like, cringy. I think it's. I think it's great that like the characters have a bit of depth. So like when Hank is at home, like she says she's going out to get stuff for him. Like I just love that everyone's a liar. Like everyone has their own little thing that they like to do that makes them feel good, and uh, that's that's just how people operate. Well, that's why this is the season of coping and seething, where every single main character is just, they're doing their cope because they don't like the mm -hmm. situation they're in based on what happened in season three, and we just get to mm -hmm. wallow in their misery with them and not really wow. progress anything. I love wallow. I love a good wallow. Better Call Saul does it better. I like how, <laughs> how how Marie is just, like, like Hank is just insulting her, and then she, she's like, yeah, I gotta go shoplifting now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she doesn't even tell them. He, she's like, yeah. You, but to be wait. fair, and everybody, tell me if I'm wrong. If you ordered Fritos, or no, you're if you ordered Cheetos <laughs> and somebody brought you Fritos, would you not uh -huh. be pissed? Oh, I, I'd be pissed. Cheetos yeah. are so much better than Fritos. <laughs> There's okay. a study that came out that Cheetos are like scientifically designed <laughs> in the lab to be the most craveable snack. Like, cause mm. it, like he put, goes, he puts it in your mouth and it like melts like butter immediately. Like the the amount of crunchiness was like scientifically tested so that it had the perfect wow. mouth feel. Like Cheetos are a special chip, and these motherfuckers, that, you want me to eat Fritos, apply, you bitch? Wouldn't I, that apply I guess to I, every chip? What? Wouldn't they all be market research? No, because like, uh, like corn chips are like Doritos are flat and triangle. There's something special about the texture and the size of shape. the Cheeto. Yeah. I've never liked a Cheeto, I'm gonna be honest. Wow! <laughs> I've never had Holy Cheetos. Shit. Hmm. Nah. You've never had Cheetos, Florian? Yeah, I don't think we have them. There's no fucking way. 
the fucking Frito Lay Corporation would not fucking not have them in Austria. You're just not looking hard enough. What if we got him a schnitzel uh, crusted with crunched up Doritos and Cheetos? Would that not be a dank food hack? <laughs> so true. Incredibly dank. Dank schnitzel. Well, I can't turn down the schnitzel, even though trying to, to eat less meat. Yeah, pretty hard. <laughs> okay, so Walt buys the the forty thousand dollars sports car for Walt Jr. <laughs> they have okay, to take it this back. This is so fucking dumb. Like, this yeah. is just him being like feeling himself and being like, I've got all this money, I might as well spend it. Uh, well, it, I it, but it makes no sense. So the problem for me is it's gonna be an eight hundred dollar restocking fee and Walt decides to just uh burn the whole car. He blows yeah. fifty two grand just to destroy the car. I do love that he does the badass walk away from the explosion and then it doesn't fucking explode. Yeah. <laughs> That's so great. Well, he was just t taking it for a joyride, but then he crashed, so then he decided to, to burn it, which is probably Wait, pretty stupid. Yeah, How did that not cause stupid. any like like attention? Like, uh, the car literally exploding in a parking lot. Near an How airport. That... Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love the overhead shot of like the three black donuts in the gravel, and then they lead yeah. right to the car <laughs> off the. <laughs> like that's just a yep, very yep. very funny framing. They really get crazy with the framing and the can. Like I, I think it's true that the season is a bit aimless. They they don't clearly have anything, but I think that allows them to be more experimental with how they show things, and they do more montages, and they do, do all like kinds of crazy stuff, which is always in the DNA of the show, but in this season, like they have the shovel cam, they have all kinds of cool, cool stuff. Tucker! 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 Oh, no, stop! The, the shovel cam reminded me of the great <laughs> Tucker scene. <laughs> you guys yeah, don't like I, Tucker? I guess... That's one of my favorite parts. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty fun, yeah, I, I guess. This guy I mean, yelling obviously... Tucker? Obviously, Jesse's being an idiot again. Like, jeez, you could have just waited. No, instead. Jesse's being super Sigma and based in that scene, and he's going to go <laughs> deal with the crackheads and fell. Yeah, he earns yeah, he Mike's respect. Like, when Mike sees Jesse's gambit worked and he's getting in the house, Mike has a little, like, smile for him. Yeah, that's because he doesn't. He, he missed <sighs> the part where, where Jesse had the gun pointed at him. He just assumed that he smooth talked him into submission. But no, he actually had to use force, and he could have died. You know, <laughs> I Them's think it was the very reckless. Yeah, he, he could have chosen the perfectly safe route of, of being in the car and having a sandwich with Mike. Who could? Turn he got that the job down? done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Would you rather uh, hear a guy yell? I do not think that you would go very. You would not go very far in uh, Gus Fring's operation. Sure, I would. I'd be very patient. I'd be like Mike. Well, Gus sees things in people, so I don't know if Florian would even get hired. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, I'm not people. No, because there's fucking... nothing to see in you. <laughs> what are you talking? <laughs> Gus <laughs> would see no potential in you. He would not hire you, and he would sooner hire Tucker. Well, he, he would give me a a scholarship. Okay, I'd be like Gale, maybe. <laughs> what do you think your role would be in his operation, Florian? Translator for uh, uh, <laughs> for Madrigal yeah. Uh, people. Yeah. I don't, what did he even say? You're a translator. Who? Hey guys, speaking of uh, stupid bullshit, how about Mike is in the back of the Los Pollos delivery truck? Uh, we got like three <laughs> machine guns, Swiss cheese up that bitch. Every single inch of the truck has a bullet hole in it. Mike gets out. Only his ear was hit. He's perfectly fine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mike has the powers and reflexes of Spider-Man, so he probably jumped right onto the the roof of the fucking truck and just held on while the bullets were firing at him. Like, it's such a it weird, it's a weird version of plot armor because they they set up and executed the scene in five minutes. Like they did not need to do it like this at all. They they mm -hmm. they chose to portray Mike in this way. What am I supposed to get? That he's super lucky? What the fuck is going on? How is he I not he dead? Did walk out. What, you don't think that that box could have stopped the bullets? You don't know what was in that they box. They shot the whole truck from multiple angles. He should be fucking mm -hmm. obliterated. Well, if they shot it from multiple angles, that just means that there's more chances they might have missed, because they wouldn't have- What? Whoa, what? Excuse me? 
I mean, well, it means that. Like, is that why the accuracy on Binding of Isaac is so shitty? Fuck you! If you riddle a car with bullets from one direction, then there's no no human shaped hole that that someone could hide in. But if you move around, then it it's just like a, a lucky a lucky ch chance that it, he might survive. You know? What are you saying? I have no idea what the fuck you're talking about, for him. You, you don't see that that if you move the gunman, then it it would be less reliable at hitting every every part of the truck. Yeah, but there's three gunmen shooting from three different yeah. angles all at the same time. Well, it was two. Yeah, whatever. He's Mike. Like, <laughs> it's just a stupid scene. It's whatever. I mean, I think that box stopped a lot of bullets. Okay, and then the side bullets he got lucky on those. All right. Uh, to go back to Everich's earlier point, by far the best, best, best section of this e uh, these episodes is the detective Hank stuff. I, yeah. I think his yeah. gambit to get Gus's fingerprints was really clever. Oh, it's so fucking good. Connecting the yeah. pieces of uh, veganism and uh, a chicken bucket or whatever, like just very mm -hmm. fun, it's, clever stuff. It's so yeah. insane that when he's first going through things, they're like, oh, well, you made a couple of leaps there. That, that's not really like this. It's at least somewhere to start. Come on, guys. Yeah, this is uh, Hank at his peak like investigation mode. And uh, it's really cool. And he's crippled at this point. Like, he still is, like, uh, mm -hmm. in a really bad shape. And he's, like, pulling off all this crazy shit. It's awesome. Uh, well, when is the first time that he gets suspicious of Gus? Because he knows Gus personally. So he must have, like, seen something, don't you, right? Do we know what happened to make him suspicious of it Gus? Was, um, it was uh, a box of Les Polos Hermanos being in Gallo's apartment. Because he's vegan. Why the hell does he have... Los Polos Hermanos. Yeah, it was like, like, right, a, like but, a bag from there or something. Yeah. yeah, but why Gus specifically? Like, that could have been any employee from well, there. Well, he, he runs the place. Like, he, he would know what was going in and out of his his store. I mean, I I, I really feel like there's got to be something. Like, I can't believe that he took Gus's fingerprints. Like, he could have he could have been anyone there. But, yeah, I mean, I guess. Like, it could at least be, like, Gus's second hand there that, that did it. Yeah, but... When, when Gus's fingerprints are also on stuff in uh, Gail's uh, apartment, Gail's apartment, then no, no, that's he's, a pretty. He, unless no, they're gay he, lovers, in which no, case that would all make sense. Has did he not bring up the the scholarship that Gus gave Gail, or does he bring that up in a different episode? I don't no, remember. It comes up. It comes up. Okay, so the the timeline is that Gail gets shot. They they find the fingerprints. They don't know whose they are, and then and then for some reason Hank decides to to get. Gus's fingerprints by tricking him into giving him a soda, and and that's how they how he linked it together. But why did he do that? Like he could have, he could have assumed anyone's fingerprints could have done. And then, and then they they invited Gus in, and then he tells him about the. Well, scholarship. we haven't watched that one yet. We only oh, watched fuck. the first seven. Uh oh. So, you. We stopped someone said eight. Up. Someone said eight. We've been very fuckers. consistent every never, season. It's never been eight. Simi said eight and eight. What the fuck? That's for season, That's for five. season five. Oh, <laughs> they because they were released in two two halves. Yeah. Well, damn. I guess. I guess <laughs> now he's gonna. Gus is gonna go to the police because because yeah. Hank has taken the fingerprints. Now, I, I think the the, the 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 leap in logic Florian has a problem with. I think it is dis explained in the episode. I just can't remember exactly how Hank gets to the. Gus conclusion, but I, I felt like it made sense when I was watching it. Ha yeah, right. totally. And Hank's reveal of the last piece of information is so fucking good. He's like putting his folders away and he's like, uh, but one more thing, one more thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but he already like, like went outside of the law to get the fingerprints at that point. So I get super illegal to ask for a refill. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that should be, oh, I guess extra legal, maybe? Damn. He just happened to really like that cup, so he kept the cup, and then he was putting things together, and he's like, oh, I just happened to have this cup with uh, <laughs> Gus Ring's fingerprints. That's totally innocent. Uh, there's no extra legal uh, <laughs> investigation there. Perfect. Okay, Hartsy, I have a Zoomer review for you. At some point, Saul Goodman says, that's what the kids call epic fail. Do the kids still call <laughs> yeah. it that? Uh, no, I don't think kids will mm. still uh, say epic unironically. Uh, at least I don't. And I've never <laughs> heard anyone else saying epic unironically. 
What if you're yeah. referring to the the story of Gilgamesh? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's no other word for it, right? Gilgamesh is too much risk. Flor guys. Florian's in awe of the the work of Gilgamesh. He's like, oh wow, that, there's no other word for it. It's just purely epic. <laughs> the epic, <laughs> the epic, epic of win. Gilgamesh. I've I, I love flood <laughs> tales that predate Kids Christianity. Today. Yeah, Kids the today would just Gilgamesh. say, Kids today would just say that's a massive L. That's right. <laughs> it's an epic the L. Dub. <laughs> the dub of Gilgamesh. <laughs> okay, well, if we're but... doing a tier list, I'm giving the first half of season four an epic L. <laughs> oh damn! It's an L. That's right. Not a dub. Is this at the bottom? Is this at the bottom of your? Of current the, ranking? Oh, definitely, yeah. Of what we've watched? Wow. Is that shit? What do you mean? The, the other side of parts are so good. In it, bro. Uh, the, the, all the other parts are good. Like, it's not like to say this is so terrible. It's just the other ones are very, very good. Wow. <laughs> well, aren't you the one who was a kid when, when this came out? You should tell us if you ever said epic, epic fail, Mumpkey. Uh, I still say it to this day. <laughs> I never stopped. Perfect, yeah. Let's do a I say, How did I forget about yeah. that? Well, do you guys have I, any other thoughts on this section or maybe final thoughts if we want to wrap it up? I really do think the overall best scene in this batch of episodes is when Hank is going over all the evidence he has with Walt and he's uh, going over it like the quote and, and it's a classic scene of WW. I wonder who that could be. So good. Oh uh, yeah, and we finally got Gail doing the David Bowie that I was talking about. Yes, last episode. <laughs> it's so great. Earth Fuck. below oh, us, oh, drifting, <laughs> falling, and 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 Walt is just mad because it's science fiction. Uh, true, <laughs> yeah. I, I guess we <laughs> could dive into the whole um, Walt's pride makes him convince uh, Hank that Heisenberg <laughs> is still out there, motivating him yeah. to destroy yeah. his life in the second half of the the series but hmm. uh, i mean we should definitely that talk one about it. drunken <laughs> mistake is what leads to like the rest of the series and the downfall of walter white yeah he had well, too much wine well most of his mistakes are drunken mistakes like when he tells when junior he tells to Skyler keep drinking the, <laughs> well that too <laughs> When you tell Skylar about the second phone, he always gets like high and then fucks it all up, you know? <laughs> well, that's because he was under anesthetic. Did he even have that much beer? That was crazy. When? Wine. Yeah. When he told Hank about uh, the... He had like a whole bottle of wine to himself. Yeah. <laughs> he was chugging <laughs> that shit, dude. He was going nuts. Damn. Well, I guess it makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, e. Rich, explain crazy. me the explain to me the psychology behind Walt uh, motivating Hank to continue pursuing himself. <laughs> um, a lot of criminals want to be caught or like need the attention or need some kind of like like marker that was like this is what they did, this is what they can take credit for. Uh, I think Walt is an egoist and uh, that he just he just wants people to know how how fucking amazing he is. You don't think Skyla well, had it? Or maybe right? he just enjoys the thrill of the chase. Mm. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. I, I think it's an ego thing where a Gale is being called a genius for Walt's work that Gale just copied down in his notebook. So I think Walt wants the credit <laughs> for like, yeah. like oh, this is like the greatest genius meth maker I've ever seen. This mm -hmm. Gale Bedecker and Walt's just fuming with rage. <laughs> yeah, you know yeah. He, he, he's not gonna have an epic written about him if he I mean, doesn't get caught at the end. Anybody who's ever done like a group project in school with somebody and had their credit taken, like they know what it's like. <laughs> <laughs> they, they murdered a guy who took the credit. Yeah. There is yeah. one other scene I want to dissect because I think okay. it, it has been evaluated and reevaluated, and I would like to reevaluate it a third time. Sure. And that is wow. the scene when Walt and Skyler are in the bedroom and Walt gives his speech about <laughs> he's not in danger, he is the danger. I am the danger. And I think uh, there's been a lot of uh, you know, evaluation of this scene in, in various ways. And now that I've watched it fully in context again, mm -hmm. I think people might be pushing a little too far in one direction on uh, how they're evaluating Walter here. Because it, leading up to that speech, Skyler says you should turn yourself into the police if you're in danger. Like, yeah. like end yeah. the gambit, this is over. So. For one, Walt is, needs to convince Skyler that he's not in danger just to get that idea out of her head. 
So when he's like giving that speech, it's not really that genuine. I think it's just another one of his lies, one of his uh, <laughs> facades. But also he's you like, know, he, he's insulted, uh, like his manliness is insulted. So that mm -hmm. ties into it too. But I think he's not being completely genuine. I think he is trying to convince Skylar that he's, you know, perfectly fine. And he just goes way overboard. But I, I think like, I think it's a mistake for him to like, uh, show Skylar this side of himself. Well, yeah, but, but then she's... he takes the shower and he immediately regrets it yeah. and apologizes, but she's already yeah. gone. Immediately... <laughs> right, yeah. he immediately goes right back to regular Walt. And That's something that a lot there, of people yeah. leave out when talking about the scene, that he immediately regrets what he said and is immediately... Yeah, he forceful. apologizes to an empty room because the bitch left in the five minutes he took a shower. Like, holy shit. So yeah. you guys don't see that that he like basically confessed to killing Gale at that point. What? Well, but yeah, he, he says, says like if there's a knock at the door, you know, that's me. I'm the one who's going to be coming to kill Gale, but I don't think Skyler's putting those pieces together. I think yeah. she must have because he has a really strong reaction to it. Well, she's back with him like two episodes later, so she probably gets <laughs> over it. Yeah, yeah I guess. No, she comes back I mean, the same episode. That's the fucking cornered episode. She goes and flips <laughs> a coin. The coin lands in Colorado twice, and she decides, okay, I guess I'll go back with Walt. Why? Because Colorado, do they legalize <laughs> weed by that point? Like, why does Colorado represent the drug life? Well, I, I, yeah. I assume she was going to run away with the baby. That's why she has the baby with her. So she was going to settle down in Colorado, but then she decides not to take the advice of the coin. I thought that she was standing on one corner and that she like each of the three other corners was like one potential path and she was just going to trust the coin to land where she should go and it landed on the Walt path and then she does it again to be sure and it lands there again because that's when she decides yeah. to go back to him. Weird thing to uh, that's trust That's she made in the entire series by the way. <clears throat> Well, isn't that a, it, doesn't that theme come up a few times in Better Call Saul and Breaking Bad? People basing life decisions just like on the flip of a coin or some sort of luck? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Certainly, it couldn't be me. I can't remember any examples, yeah, but it's been maybe. a while since I sat down and watched all Better Call Saul. You really think uh, that the Colorado was the weed corn? That's crazy. I, it landed yeah, I on Colorado twice, that. and then she decided to pursue the druggy life, so I don't know why Colorado, <laughs> in her mind, meant go back to Walt. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I really just thought she didn't take the advice. It's of the crazy. coin? What a waste yeah. of a drive to the four corners. <laughs> Yeah, right. I mean, she uh, got to, to escape, but then she did. You got to go, E. Rich. No, no, no. I've, I've got a question because oh. just Jesse talks about having this dog and like killing this dog. Oh my god! I didn't understand that because uh, he he doesn't have a dog. Again, I mean, I wouldn't it have been nice to have real? that scene of him and the dog in episode one of the season instead of fucking <laughs> blackjack? Like, well, so now we have to just believe that off screen he <laughs> yeah. had this dog. Can you show? Don't tell Vince. What the fuck? Okay, so I know that Mumkey is unironically like making the joke that there's a dog. Unironically but... making the joke? It's just uh, really bad writing to like not show us this dog. And there's no the fucking dog. <laughs> he says there's a dog. Oh wait, wait, wait. So, wait. Maybe, so, maybe Gale identified as a furry and he's a dog, and that's who wait, he's so, yeah. wait, so does I mean, we didn't see think... his fur suit. So, so does, <laughs> does Irish unironically think there was? Oh a my dog? god! Shut up, you Austrian. Class like classic Austrian yeah. sense of humor. You can pick up that sarcasm so well. So good. Yeah, thanks. That's cool. Wait, is sarcasm like a are, are you concept? autistic, Florian? Because I'll stop making fun of you if you're autistic. No, obviously, I'm autistic. All programmers are autistic. <laughs> well, I'm not joking. Well, shit. They, I guess all four of us then. We're all on the spectrum. Were you, were you diagnosed, Florian? Well, you don't. Program. On WebMD. We're self diagnosed. <laughs> I guess you should have been programmers. Well, next <laughs> podcast episode, we're going to do the autistic uh, quiz online, all three of us. <laughs> well, I guess well, all right. Rich, wants to come. I'm probably a bored in my case. I'd be down. I'd be down with the <laughs> autism test. Well, Erich, I, I went to a psychologist, as you know, mm -hmm, and, she, mm -hmm. and she said I, I probably have autism. But I... Well, but that's not the same as, <laughs> as a diagnosis. Well, you need to provide documentation that you are autistic to yeah. go to programming school, right? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah, that, that, that's you part know. of your application. 
No, it's programmer school is just the school of life, you know? <laughs> so if we're going to circle back to the... School. If we're going to circle back to the initial sin here, the idea is Florian's excuse for not understanding if Erich is joking is that he has <laughs> autism. In which case, uh -huh. Erich, Florian has so little respect for you, he thinks you're literally <laughs> that stupid that you literally believe there was a dog. That's the excuse he's giving with this autistic shit. <laughs> He must hide. He must hold me in such low. Uh, he low really, he thinks you're stupid, like genuinely. So, so you admit there's no dog. <laughs> <laughs> you, you're asking if I admit there's no dog. Yeah. He I talked really about the dog. He said that the dog him. was there is dead. A dog. I mean, there used to be one. Not, not anymore. He's dead. He's gone. Dog I really want to hear the perspective are... of a Breaking Bad fan who got in it through all the ironic memes and shit that became popular, like, for these last couple of years. Because we all were way into the series, way before it be blew up as a meme online. Yeah, what if somebody was... decided not to watch Breaking Bad because they're really sensitive about dogs being killed? <laughs> you are not the dog. <laughs> You're not even capable of being the dog. I had the dog, but now I don't. You are not the dog. <laughs> See, he still believes there's a dog. We're gonna stop him. Do you guys think it's hypocritical when Walt uh, calls Mike a homicidal maniac? <laughs> yeah. Between the two yeah, of he's, them. Definitely, he's definitely not a maniac. He, like, yeah. He's definitely homicidal, but he's not like a maniac. Uh, yeah, I mean, Walt is really uh, kettle calling the pot black here, calling somebody uh, else a homicidal maniac. Holy shit. <laughs> Well, Mike yeah. definitely has way more kills than Walt does. But he's, so, he's not like, doing it m maniacally. Yeah. Like, Walt, when yeah. Walt gets the people in the prison killed, like, I think he's enjoying it. Mm. He's just following yeah. orders, you see. Yeah, Mike has <laughs> no smile when he's in the warehouse shooting up all of uh, Chow's men or whatever. No. Yeah, he's definitely the least maniacal murderer, all right? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, at... do you guys have anything you want to plug? Hmm. <laughs> Mm. Well, everyone, if you haven't seen my my Tinder video about the chatbot, check that one out. It's on my channel. You got any ladies with the chatbot, or do I have to watch the video to? You'll have to, to watch the video. Uh, e Rich, oh. E Rich, don't watch the video. Second <laughs> best Tinder experiment ever posted I, to YouTube. But I gotta figure out whether he got he got any chicks. The video is a lie. Like the entire premise oh, is man. a lie. I, I can't believe oh, that you spoil this. I, I uh, respect E. Rich's time too much to let him sit through that shit. I, even I, like, after two minutes, I said, okay, this is <laughs> fake as fuck. Goodbye. <laughs> you motherfucker. I it's, guess. It was so incredibly phony, Florian. Come on. <laughs> now I want to see it just from this. <laughs> yeah. Then go watch I, it, for fuck's sake. It's not worth I, your time. <laughs> well, if you look at the chat, they were actually surprised, okay? You, you are ridiculous. Okay. <laughs> I what? guess I'd like to uh, plug Heartsy Prodsy, my YouTube channel. Are you gonna post something? Yeah, yeah, actually mm -hmm. I am gonna, I'm, well, oh, I keep yeah. saying that I'm working on videos, but I really am. I uploaded three back to back like a year ago and that was good, but then I stopped. Sounds like me. <laughs> Sounds a lot <laughs> like me. Heartsy, you did that great Gushers video. How about you do a, a Popcorners tier list? That, that does sound like a good idea, yeah. Yeah. I might put that in my list. I do have a big list of ideas I want to do. It's just sitting there, though, collecting dust. Me too. Yeah, since it's the official snack of our Breaking Bad podcast. Yeah, yeah speaking you know. of which, E-Rich just bust out these bad boys to celebrate um, the end of a podcast. Well done. I, 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 have a, uh, I have a confession to make. I did not buy any popcorners. Oh, well. Uh, I was eating Cheez-Its. You're better off because the sea salt yeah, ones are good. genuinely bland and, and horrible. Yeah, it so did not gonna... sound good. I thought you were gonna say your dog ate your your, your popcorners. <laughs> yeah, my problem dog ate the popcorn. <laughs> There's only I mean, one solution for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> e what do you want people uh, to tweet at you? Yeah, you can find me on Twitter at t z a r r e v a n, and then on at uh, Revan one one three eight. I've gotten a, a bunch of uh, uh, followers in the last couple of weeks, so thanks guys. Yeah, we're trying to get you more Letterboxd followers than Kino Corner. How are we doing so far? Right. <laughs> Nowhere close. Of hmm. Couple yeah, thousand behind was, still? Yeah, since yeah, you probably. misrepresented last time how many you had. Look, look, I thought we were talking about Twitter. <laughs> Wait, so how many Letterboxd followers do you have? I am checking now. I think I have about 200. 
My, uh -huh. my, I'd probably have 50, <laughs> if I had to guess. Yeah, I could have sworn you had like 170. Hmm. I guess that's... Really? The rich yeah, does? That, must, that, that seems wrong now. Yeah. Well, somebody I just completely up. profile. Um, uh, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> 77 followers. <laughs> Okay, let's oh, get that yeah. up to 80 by the next Breaking Bad episode. Yeah, You've three got a people. Whole Come on, guys. Three Erich, people. Do it. Erich is right on the cuff of a thousand followers on Twitter. We need to get him there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's only like 40 yeah. people. Get on it, people. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.